Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to another episode of Second Take Cinema, coming at you from the glorious Impala Films headquarters in snowy South End on Sea. And this is a very special episode because this, this baby, is a double bill. It's my birthday double bill. You Ooh. may remember a few months ago we did a birthday double bill for Rory that didn't release on his birthday because we're a little bit behind. But it released close to his birthday where we reviewed, we did a double bill of Wild Hogs and Pray for the Wildcats. Why did I want to say Panthers? <laughs> Pray for the Panthers. Yeah. Panther. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> and pray for the wildcats. Well, today we're doing another double build that's a little bit different, baby. Today on Second Take Cinema, we are pairing 2001's Serendipity with 2018's... 17, I think. 2017's Last Christmas. Cue the music. <laughs> So we're going to start with 2001 Serendipity, and I hope you're all strapped in, folks, because this is going to be a belter of an episode, because me and Rory have already talked a little bit about this episode, about this film, and I think this is going to be a real belter, okay? Mm -hmm. Because uh, <laughs> this is one of my favourite movies of all time, and he's ruining it. It's a terrible film. So, <laughs> this is from Ye Old Year of 2001. It is directed by Peter Chelsom, written by Mark Klein, starring John Cusack and Kate Beckinsale, who just so happen to be my two favourite actors in the world. Uh, it also features Molly Shannon, Jeremy Piven, Bridget Moynihan, and Eugene Levy. Cinematography by John de Borman. Music by Alan Silvestri. It had a budget of $28 million and grossed $77.5 million. Um, based on 141 reviews, Rotten Tomatoes gives it a 59% approval rating, so not great, but not terrible. And the consensus reads, light and charming, serendipity could benefit from less contrivances. That's kind of the whole point of the film, but we'll get there. Um, audiences polled by CinemaScore gave the film an average grade of B+. Roger Ebert, though, our good buddy Roger Ebert, gave the film one and a half out of four stars. Uh, the New York Times gave it a mixed review and compared it to cinematic candy floss, which I can't strictly argue with, actually, because uh, that's not exactly inaccurate. No. So, for those who don't know, very quickly, this movie uh, centres on Jonathan Traeger and Sarah Thomas, played by... John Cusack and Kate Beckinsale, respectively. And five days before Christmas, they're in Bloomingdale's and they both reach for the last pair of black cashmere gloves. I'm not going to lie. This is how I want to meet my soulmate, is reaching for the last item on a shelf in a shop. Let me have my dream, okay? It's a bit specific, um, especially since you only go to the happy shopper every now and then. Or Tesco. I go, meet, Tesco, I go to Tesco. I go to no Waterstones. I go to Waterstones, and I would love to meet. Sell cashmere drugs. I would love to meet. Drugs? I didn't say it got me the cashmere <laughs> gloves. I say it had to be an item. Right. I would love to reach for a book, and at the same time, a bookish but beautiful woman, or a big sweaty man, <laughs> or a big sweaty man, also reaches <laughs> for the book. Our hands brush, and we set off on a wacky adventure like this. Anyway, they both reach for that. Wacky. All right, now carry on. It was on. definitely wacky. You've no, got to give it that. No, it's bollocks is what it is. Carry on. Same thing. No, well, no, it's anyway. not. <laughs> um, <laughs> wacky suggests that it's full of intrigue and that there is there is some sort of fun and majesty and something something innate that you can get your you I had fun. feel and vibe with. I had fun. Anyway, uh, basically... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this it's a brilliant be film because it's one of your favourites. Uh, so basically, um, 
they both reach for the gloves. You know, they can't decide who gets them. They end up going for dessert at Serendipity 3, which is a restaurant in New York, apparently. A pious uh, restaurant, apparently. Yeah. They end up having this lovely uh, evening together. And the problem is they both have partners. But John, Jonathan is like... Um, I don't know, like, I'm having the best night of my life. I've never had a connection with someone like this before. What I feel an amazing like should... hour of life. I feel like, you should... hey, everything can change in an hour, baby. Um, you you realise that the Cuban Missile Crisis only took about... Yeah, like... that's an actual real crisis. That's a thing where things are actually It's a thing happening. that could change in an hour. But that's an actual event, Anything. not just talking to some bin in a fucking cafe. Hey, have you never had a conversation with someone so powerful that it changed your entire life after no. one conversation? No. Well, I hope you do one day, because it's amazing. It's bullshit. It's, it's not. No, you don't know that person well enough for them to change your life in just an hour hey, or two. You've you... clearly never spoke to the Dalai Lama. <laughs> I'm never going to get the chance to speak <laughs> to the You don't know. Anyway, let me get through the plot summary, okay? Carry on. Carry on. Um, before you spew your venom and your hatred. Um, <laughs> they um, spend this evening together, blah, 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 blah. Um, she believes in fate and signs and serendipity, which means a fortunate accident. And they do this thing where she writes, he writes his name and number on a $5 bill and she goes and spends it. And she writes her name and number in the back, in the front cover of a copy of Love in the Time of Cholera by Gabriel Garcia Marquez. I have actually read a Gabriel Garcia Marquez book, not that one though. I read of Love and Other Demons, uh, is which is good? it's very good. It's not something I'd recommend to a general audience because it is li- it's literature you have to distance yourself from. It's basically, in short, it's a very small novel about a priest who gets called to a Colombian village where they're convinced that this little girl has been possessed by a demon and he falls in love with the little girl. <gasps> and, yeah. And then, obviously, quite understandably... says a lot about the writer that that's, what, that's the art well, well, they well, choose well. to I mean, reference. I Mar- Marquez is regarded as one of the greatest writers of the 20th century, so... Yeah, um, so and, was Christopher but, Columbus at one point considered to be a great sailor? Still is. Uh, no, <laughs> yeah, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Not. Hey, they still celebrate Columbus Day. No, we don't anymore. They're rewriting, they're, re- they're changing the name and fuck, fuck are they, they are. Yeah, apparently there's several places that are changing Christopher Columbus Day. Oh, okay. Because it, it's... it's Because he found it by accident. And he's a genocidal madman. Yeah, true, He was true, even true. evicted by his own king because he was mental. Fair play. He kept anyway, murdering things. Stop with the evil. Okay, <laughs> I'm not the one who chose a writer that writes about a paedophilic priest. Did you, did you, but well, this is the point. And then the the <laughs> priest then doesn't want to act on this because he knows that it's wrong. And I actually can't remember how it ends. I need to reread it. The Pope lets him off. It's a very weird book. <laughs> it's a very weird book. Okay, sorry, um, I'm I'm being very lefty right now. I'm anyway, going to take my drink and let you finish. Uh. She sells that to a used bookstore and says to him, if I find the five pound note or you find, or five dollar note, sorry, and you find the book, then it means we're destined to be together. He's like, well, let's try something more immediate than that. So they go in this hotel, get in separate elevators and say, hey, um, if we both push the same floor, we're meant to be together. And they do. They both push the top floor. But he is foiled by an, a brat dressed as a devil who gets in and presses all the buttons and malfunctions the elevator. Um, ends up missing her. He's very upset. We skip ahead. Always by only a fraction of a Always second. Always by a fraction of a second. It's so sad. Skip ahead. I don't think it specifies number of years, does it? It just says a few years later. I thought it was the same time. No, no, no. It definitely says a few years later. Does it? Yeah, definitely. Are you sure? It I thought... definitely is. I've seen this film a hundred times. Okay, well, no. Yeah, fine. I'm... I'm... <laughs> We skip ahead a few years, and Jonathan is getting married now to Bridget Moynihan's character, and Jeremy Piven is his best man. Uh, meanwhile, Sarah, Kate Beckett's character, she's kind of given up on the whole fate thing. She's a psychiatrist working uh, on the opposite side of the country, and she's got a partner who she's going to marry who's into sort of Eastern music, and he's going on tour. Both of them, both Jonathan and Kate Beckinsale, uh, Sarah, start to get cold feet. 
and decide to go on one last journey to try and find each other. Um, and as you would guess, uh, they basically keep just missing each other, but destiny almost seems to be hurting them in a certain way because like events that happen to one will happen to the other. Like there's a bit where they get tangled up by a dog walker and then 10 minutes later, that same dog tangles up Kate Beckinsale, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and you could probably see where this is going because it's a romantic comedy from 2001. Anyway, so I first saw this film when I was about 15, loved it, absolutely loved it. Um, I think it's incredibly sweet. And I have watched it every Christmas, even though it's not strictly a Christmas film. Um, I've watched it every Christmas since then. You had never seen this film before. I nope. uh, never heard of it before either, I don't think. Mm, I had heard of it, but I don't watch... I'll be honest, rom-coms are a hard sell for me. Um, Clearly, because you don't believe in love. <laughs> I do believe in love. I absolutely do. I don't believe in cheating, which is what this film is. Scummy-ass film that it is. And I'll give you this, before, not to spoil too much... But the next one you showed me last Christmas, yeah. right? It's cheesy popcorn tat. Mm. But I tell you what, I quite enjoyed it. Mm. And the emotional bits hit me. This does not. Yeah. I fell out almost immediately with each of the leads of this. And I never regained any respect oh, for them. See, I think they've got and I don't mean the actors, I mean yeah, the characters. Yeah. I think they've got incredible chemistry together, those two. Um, it but is it's a terribly It written. is a tough film. It is a tough film yeah, in the sense sorry. that... Um, as you say, it does. Yeah, they're it, cheating. This could be a much simpler film if they simply didn't have other partners. If it was just that years later they were both single and decided to try and find each other, that would be great. That would be a much I'd be simpler happy film. With that story. Arguably a more boring film. Well, arguably a more moral film. In yeah, fact, yeah, not yeah, even but I'm arguably. not interested in moral. I'm interested in complexity. There's no complexity. They're just both cunts. And I hate to... I don't use that term lightly. I think it's good They're that we... vile people. If I knew these people, I would divorce them from my life. They are vile Harsh. humans. Honestly. I, uh, I think it's good that we've finally got a film showing cheaters in a positive light. Oh, I God. Think that's been, that's exactly I think that's been... exactly what we've been missing this I think that's time. exactly what we've been missing. <laughs> you know we... Fuck this noise. This should not be something we should have to argue. Because this, it's so, it's, cheating is bad. Why the fuck is this not showing that? This is one of those melty movies that does what s assholes in society do. I don't know, do. I think it does show that it's bad. It doesn't I show mean, that it's bad because you're meant to feel for the assholes. It, the but only two characters who are genuine, like that you get enough screen time that you actually feel for them are the best friend. Jeremy Piven, yeah. Yeah, and, um... Uh, well, actually, you don't get time to feel for him. He's just funny. He's Eugene Levy. Yeah. The other characters, like, I feel for the partners yeah. a bit. Because we get to see we Bridget Moynihan. No, we don't see as much as we perhaps could. Um, I feel like this film... I think the problem this film has is... I think the story it wants to tell is a story worth telling. I think it is limited by its genre. Which is, if, if you had this as a serious drama... Because... Bottom line, people cheat, right? Far more than I think anyone we wants to admit. glorify it. Well, this is what I'm saying. I think far more than anyone wants to admit, people cheat. And I think, especially today, it's funny, this film's 20 years old. Yeah. Nowadays, cheating has become almost a normal part of dating, which is horrible it's to disgusting. think about. It's disgusting, um, but yeah. If this were a serious drama... I'll just poke myself in the eye. Don't do that, man. <laughs> if this Jesus. was a serious drama that took the time to actually explore how the actions that Cusack and uh, Beckinsale are doing affects Others. their partners... Because we get smitches, We get little snippets of that. Yeah, we especially with Bridget Cusack's, Moynihan. Yeah, Kubrick... Uh, Kubrick. Cusack. <laughs> Cusack's prospective wife in this has a moment where we know that she's she adores him because she actually notices things about him, things yeah. that he's doing, things that even though it ruins her, like yeah. like she finds the book that he's she been looking gives for. him the book. I know. Yeah, that and, doesn't that break your heart though? Yeah, because he's a cunt. Like, oh, it's so she's the innocent one. Yeah. He's the asshole. But we're meant to be sitting there going, oh, bless him, he finally got this. No, fuck you and your book, you cock. Go in the mm. hole and die. I don't care about Cusack's cat. He's an evil piece of shit. Because here's the thing. Here's the thing. 
He obviously is not happy in this marriage, no matter how nice she is, whatever. And that's fine. That happens. People split up. People who are in the best of intentions together, sometimes that 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 relationship splits or you you separate um, emotionally or your life directions are going separate yeah. ways. I ain't, look, This isn't me saying once... I'm not a conservative-minded person who's like, well, you're, when you're married, that's it, you two forever. To, you know, fine. Everyone gets to pick their path. Mm. However, he's a me- like he's not only it's not a case of he leaves he, her to go and look. Yeah, Sarah. and here's the thing: it's not even like he's only had a few thoughts of it, and coincidence brings them together, which would still be annoy me. But at least it's coincidence. And the whole point of this film is meant to be about that it is um, fate that's bringing them together. But it's not, because he's actively going out and searching for her, using his friend's newspaper connections to yeah. do it. And it's like, then it's not fate. He's literally just cheating. So it, all of the possible things that you could throw out, oh no, but you just need to understand about fate. That's not fate. He's actively mm. going out and looking so for I, her, I... cheating on his wife, or soon-to-be yeah. wife. And the one thing he does do right is that he doesn't marry her. Because yeah. he's breaking, he's breaking her by basically making her the second best chance he's got. Yeah, and going well, you know, I'll keep the marriage and everything going. He's keeping her because on the she'll hook, be isn't a, he? Yeah, she'll do. Yeah, and she's doing the same, by the way, with the guy that she wants to marry. Yeah, because she's constantly thinking about Cusack. Yeah, and it's just like stop, stop this, this bullshit. You either care about someone and want to be with them, or you don't. It is quite black and white. Yeah. And if you're having questionable thoughts... You have you need ruined to question... this film for me. I hope you know that. Oh, because comes... none, of, none of this has ever bothered me until I've watched this with you today. To be fair, this is... You've shown me a film that's... Because of... And I won't go too much into it. Personal life from last year. This is quite triggering. Yeah, but I, I got cheated on and it doesn't bother me. Yeah. I found this film comforting. Oh, I found this How really weird is that? Interesting. Like I found it really comforting after I got cheated on. Yeah, I didn't because it's 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 glorifying it. Uh, is it because are you? It's weird, isn't it? Maybe it's and this probably speaks to me having an ego. You've watched it and obviously gone. I identify with the damage being done to Bridget Moynihan, and I feel terrible because I don't know the name of the actor who plays Lars, but know. that guy from yeah. my big fat Greek wedding. <laughs> that's where he's from that's what he's most famously yeah yeah, yeah 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 I'm just you're, laughing you're, you're identifying with them I think and being like the unfair damage being caused to them yeah and me having an ego I identify with Kuzak and I'm like well that means the person I'm destined to be with is still out there somewhere <laughs> yeah but he's not destined to be with her he seeks her out so the, the whole point of the plot is that it's about mm. fate and actively yeah. it's they get together not because of fate. Well, no, in a way it is because the note, the note itself, the, the five pound note, yeah. doesn't work its way to Kate Beckinsale. It works its way to Molly Shannon. And it is only that she accidentally picks up the wrong purse, a.k.a. an act of fate, that she gets the number. Same as he never finds the book fucking Bridget Moynihan does. Right. Uh and it's only because she gives it to him as a gift. So it's, I, I get what you mean. It's a weird thing. But what I was going to say about the genre yeah. was I feel like if this was a drama where it was looking at the fact that people do cheat yep. and how that destroys people, I feel like that would be better. I'd like the that pro- story more. Yeah. The problem is this is trying to fit that story yeah. into a rom-com. It doesn't, it's not compatible. And you're, you're having to crowbar it in. Well, you have to give them the positive ending. The place this should have ended... Is when they break up with their partners. No, it's when he see like... Well, yeah, it's that. But specifically the point where Cusack goes all the way to her house to try and find her. And when he gets there, her sister, who looks very similar to her from a distance, is shagging her dude. And it looks like she's sleeping with someone else. Cusack ends up on on the garden and the friend says... Do you not think maybe we're here because you're just not happy standing with the thought of standing somewhere else. somewhere else? Fine. Fine. That's a good moral. And that's it's only at that point where it's like, dude, you and, and it should have been a dude, you know you've been a dick, right? Like everything you've done is sick. 
And you, I understandably, maybe you, yes, you're not happy. Has made you yeah. do that. But Jeremy Piven ends up worshipping him for it. Yeah, and that that is a complete one eighty because he's, he's like, "You're a jackass." Yeah, <laughs> but he means it as a good thing. Yeah, and that that one eighty I didn't like. Yeah, because it's again, it, it's done in that way to shoehorn it so that oh yeah, but even though he's a cheating piece of shit, he still deserves the love of the person he's been chasing that he met for an hour once twenty years ago. Like mm. fuck off, fuck off. Yeah, like it's it's it doesn't work for me personally. Yeah. It doesn't work because it's it's. I think the thing is is there's a lot of contrivances in this, and where this certainly at the beginning where they you know we'll choose the buttons on the elevator. One piss off with that. That's really annoying. But you know, fine. This is what they're doing to try and prove that fate is bringing them together. Mm. Clearly doesn't work. Fate doesn't give a shit about you. Fucking devil turns up. Fate doesn't exist. So, what ends up happening is, you know, they've got all this will they, won't they, they miss each other. And then, we're supposed to believe fate is still playing its part. Mm. But we're shown actively that fate is not playing its part. Because they are actively pursuing. But isn't it that a little of both is happening? No. That's the way I've always interpreted it. Well, no, because if you're active, because here's the thing, it's not, okay, so let's say fate is playing a half active part mm. because of the book and because of the, the note, yeah. which is by pure accident, right? That's not the bit I struggle with. The bit I struggle with is that they're actively seeking each yeah. other, both knowing that they're marrying someone else. Yeah. It's, it's, because if it's it, a it, little dodgy. Here's the thing, <laughs> maybe it's just me, maybe this is just me and it's a personal thing. But I've never been in a position where I'm in a relationship with someone. I really care about them. And I'm just like, yeah, but maybe I could just fucking be with someone else. Mm. It doesn't occur to me. Maybe it's me. Maybe just you're just better than everyone, That's Rory. not me trying to be smug. It's literally never... The one time that's ever happened, I left her. Right. Because I re- I was like, I'm having thoughts that I'd rather be with someone else. I don't feel, su- because I don't feel supported, because I don't think we're in the same place, blah, blah, blah. So I left her. Mm. And it, you know what? That was the right move. Because sticking in a relationship where I didn't feel right was the wrong move. Yeah. For me, because I'm now in a relationship I'm not happy with. And it would have been for her, because I would have been dragging her life along for longer. Yeah. It's it's the wrong move to everybody. And it's only selfish ego that makes you think, no, but they will do. Yeah. You know, oh, fucking you really do care, don't you? You're a really sympathetic human being that they will do is the person you're marrying. Yeah. they des- Surely they deserve oh, for, someone for, who f- actually cares about them. I mean, unfortunately, people do do that. Of course In they fact, do. there's a whole thread. Very depressing. I don't advise you ever read it. There's a whole thread on Reddit about for people who married there, you'll do option. Ugh. And how has your marriage gone? And to be fair, some of them turn around and say, actually, it turned out to be the best thing I've ever done. We're very happy together, etc., etc." Um And some of them are just yeah. like, yeah, it's okay. See, the Kind of th- boring. The other problem with this film's premise, at least for me, again, mm-hmm. there are people out there Story who are my childhood, more romantic than I am. <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah. But it's the idea that you can just go... Oh, and you're in love. Like, that's your one true romance love. I don't believe that. Because all relationships... No, 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 no. There are people you will see and you will immediately have a connection with that Mm. feels like that, you know, love at first sight. I've had that. Yeah. But the relationship can't subsist on that. No, no, no. Relationships take work. We agree on that. Yeah. So Relationships take lots of work. But then it's not true love because the relationship is the true love. So that's a, that first meeting or that first true lo- mm. lo- love at first sight, that's an infatuation. No, Realistically. I don't agree with that. Because sorry. it only develops into romance via relationship. Ah, uh, I disagree. Relationship, what, how can it not Relationships be? are the result of love, not the love itself. No, they're the result of... No, no. relationships start because of a fact infatuation. Mm. And then you develop romance through that relationship. All right. But that might be where this film misses but, me. Because I, I just don't believe that you could see someone. You're already potentially, like, before they see each other again, they both love each, they both love their partners. And then, or, or certainly Cusack doesn't have a reason to hate his partner the way that, you know, she might do. But at the same time, it's like, if you're willing to throw all of that away for a five second engagement, then your relationship isn't worth a damn. What the yeah. fuck were you doing? 
why did you do this? Why did you build this relationship? Yeah. Why did you build this foundation? Realistically. It'd be like me building a foundation going, you know what? I am going to be uh, the world's best singer. Mm. Right? I'm going to be the world's best singer. Put all my attention in that. I'm going to pour the foundation for that. Work my way up. And now I'm Adele-sized rock, like, m- music star. Right? Yeah. I've managed to make that top roll. Get yeah. right at the top whack. And then just go, yeah, but I actually wanted to be a builder. You'd be like, why the oh, you fuck mean like, you didn't mean, you start as a builder then? You mean like the KLF did when they just burnt all their library of music? <laughs> that's, for pre- that's for pretension, and you didn't like that. I didn't like that. It was ridiculous. Fucking morons. Um, so we don't know. It's not confirmed, but I, I assume it is. Obviously, when they meet the first time at Christmas, yeah. at the beginning, we, she says she's got a boyfriend. He says he's got a girlfriend. Yep. We don't... It never confirms anything whether those... That are girlfriend the same of Bridget, oh, Bridget Moynihan and Lars. Yeah, that's true. I assume it is. We don't. There's no mention of them changing partners, but no. then there's no reason to, no, even if they did. The realistic thing to have done, if you had that incredible night together, and uh, let's say you're John Cusack and you have that incredible night together, and you legitimately feel, because he he clearly feels very strongly about this, because when when she when he misses her and she goes, he's really upset isn't he and he like yeah. kicks the puddle we get we get sad Cusack in the subway yeah um the realistic thing you do is go home and dump your girlfriend yeah because you know that <laughs> she's not the one you want to be with. because you realize that yeah that's not the one you want to be with realistically i don't know if the majority of people cowards are that self-aware <laughs> that's cowardly or then. or are that cowardly yeah i mean to be fair, we see we've seen in modern dating, haven't we, how prevalent ghosting is. Ghosting oh. is cowardly. Yeah, ghosting and, is very cowardly. But it's the majority of people do it. Yeah. Which unfortunately leads us to the conclusion that the majority of people are cowards. Do you know that's a horrible thought? But well, that is probably true. But the thing is, that's a I, shame. I, I know. To be I, more I know this is gonna like it's gonna feel like me on a soapbox proselytizing. You know, aren't, aren't I better because I don't feel this? You know, I have shitty things about me. I'm not perfect. Basically, do you not think it's possible that the reason for accepting this level of cowardice in modern society might be partly, not just this film. It's selfishness. It, it's no, because yeah, it, yeah, yeah, yeah. But do you not think the fact that we've got films like this, for, which is now over 20 years old, mm. that have, so we've got people our age who grew up with this. Yeah. Watching this going, oh, isn't it romantic? Not many, to be fair. Most people didn't see this. Okay. This is one in a million. This got yeah. made by people who agreed with it as a premise. Yeah. So the idea is that we've raised a generation of people who see this shit mm. as romantic. So just so you know, you're in for a rough ride because we've got several more films coming up in STC that have people actively cheating on partners. Um, yeah, now, but to are be they fair, the heroes of their story? Yeah, don't be wrong. So in Three to Tango, which is the other big one we've got yeah. on the thing, um, very clearly Dylan McDermott is a cunt. There you go. But, That's fine. But arguably Matthew Perry is also a cunt because he's actively lying to Neve Campbell just to spend time with her. Right. He's pretending to be a gay man. Right. So she'll lower her defences and let him I'll get judge close that when I her. see it. Yes. But it doesn't sound good. No. Um, late, n- late 90s, early 2000s rom-coms were not exactly woke. Um, I mean, it's, 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 and you wonder why we've got such a cowardly uh, backwards fucking... I, I think the reason we tolerate... Scene. I think the reason we tolerate behaviour like that is selfishness. And I'll tell you what I mean. It excuses you doing it too. Yeah, if you don't make a fuss about... Go- Let's take ghosting as our example because we know how common ghosting is. Yep. Yeah. If you don't cause a fuss about ghosting and we just accept it, if everyone just accepts it, it means you always have it as an option too. Right. And I think that's why we don't stamp things like that out. Yeah, I wouldn't do that. And it's the same with it's the same with it's the same reason that this whole side chick, side guy business has become such a big deal. <sighs> if everyone's got someone on the side, then it means fine. you can use it as an excuse too. Now, I personally don't agree with that. It's a normaliser. Um, I do agree with, like, if you're in a polyamorous relationship, that's different, where that's all, all the parties have agreed. Enjoy yourself. Um, <laughs> I, I, I really like this film, though. I don't know what it says about me, probably that I'm terrible and horrible and I can't wait to cheat on Not my girlfriend, but... Um, which you know, Look, I, I've had a I've had a very negative reaction to this film. There's no denying that. This um, I don't. I'm trying to think if I've ever had a, ne- a reaction this negative to a film, but I definitely have. Yeah, video game Earth Force. 
You weren't a big fan of no, that. No, I didn't take that personally like this. That's though. true enough. Um, I feel like there is a film, and I can't think what it is at the minute. We've never done it on VGMP. It's some. I think it's something we did on Jamie. Your film taste sucks. And I literally was like, it offends me that this film exists. <laughs> but it's a film that like everyone else thinks is really, at least this is trash that everyone agrees is crap. Right. Um, this was like something that people consider a masterpiece. Yeah. And I was, Silence offends me. Martin Scorsese's film Silence. Right. Because it's so fucking boring. Is that the one with the, about the, the... Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah, so I've, fucking I've heard boring. lots of negatives about that though. Um, oh, Eden Lake. Eden Lake. Right. Because one reading of that film is all poor people are scum. Oh. and that offends me <laughs> right well fair play then there um, you go but i'm sure do... most people watched it without that being the, the main mindset but yeah it's a genuine read of it if that's um, that, if that's how you but i i don't know if i will ever be able to watch this film the same so i would ask that because i don't want to take away from your in- like well it's too late <laughs> if you I, enjoy never this occurred film to maybe it... maybe just and maybe it's i'm not trying to take away your enjoyment jamie you obviously like this film that's fine yeah Maybe if you either ignore me when you watch it, for fuck's sake, don't let me spoil your fun. No. But alternatively, if you can't get my negativity mm. about it out of your head, maybe just analyse what it is in the film I don't think that I... moves you and what you're connecting with. I tell you what I think it because is. Because then you could argue out of my yeah. bullshit. Well, I don't think it will ruin it for me because I'll tell you what the difference... The thing is for me, because don't get me wrong, it is different. If someone in real life was doing what John Cusack and Kate Beckinsale are doing in this film, yeah. I'd be like, whoa, 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 scum. Like, you yeah. need to go and break it. That is very different to a film. In much the same way that I watched Nightmare on Elm Street, mm. and I'm like, yeah, Freddy, kill those kids. Yeah, but If an still... actual Freddy Krueger existed, I'd be like, someone put this man in he's jail. He's still actively shown as the villain. By the time you get to the later films, it's oh, arguable. Oh, really? It's arguable. Uh, and definitely Child's Play definitely does that. By the time you get to Bride and Seed of Chucky, you are rooting for Chucky to kill people. You literally just like, yeah, kill these obnoxious teenagers. Um, and he is the main character of the movie. Like, yeah, he has yeah, the yeah. most but screen time. We can have main character. Like, the Joker is a main character in Batman Dark Knight. He is... A phenomenal character. I enjoy watching his character. Yeah, but you would condemn it in real life, obviously. But I, yeah, of course I would. But I'm not watching it going. This guy is the moral man, and the film doesn't present no, but him you are, as the moral. No, man. but you are watching it going. That's so fucking cool. Yeah, but that's not what this is. That's not my problem. If this was like, my problem is that in this film they're showing John Cusack and Kate Beckinsale's characters as the heroes of this story, mm. of the journey, and they're not. They are the villains of this journey. Mm. Now, the fact that they have the arc and that they recover it somewhat towards the end, I still don't think they should get together, but that's a that's a genre break. Right? Yeah. But, so, but I would have preferred it as a drama where they realise that actually what they're after is getting away from their partners, not seeing each other. Yeah. Um, that would have been a more, more understandable ending. They don't deserve the happiness of each other after yeah. all the shit they've pulled. Because they've also dragged other people into cheating who yeah. know their partners, and would then have. Well, no, they're not making them cheat. No, no, no. But they they're now aware of it. They're they're accomplices in the cheating. Oh no, that's not a real thing. They're accomplices you in can, the cheating. You can't be an accomplice in cheating. Yes, you can. And actually, there is a positive. John Cusack's behaviour inspires Jeremy Piven to rekindle his relationship See, with his ex. Yeah. He again, why his character is in because he's. Not cheated on his partner. Yeah. Their love life has sort of dwindled out, and he's he's basically wants to try and reconnect. We don't get a positive ending for him though. We don't get a oh they definitely get back together. Mm. We don't even know if she's open to it. I mean, to be fair, we don't know. Cusack and Beckinsale stay together five minutes past the end of the film. It yeah, but be, it's shown it, as the happy it, ever it, after. It, oh yeah, but th- this is a problem with all rom coms. There's loads of rom coms where they end, and you're like. 10 minutes later this two would break up yeah. because because they're clearly incompatible and you could tell that like they'd get in a cab and get into an argument sort of thing yeah. a lot of uh, romantic films have to end where they end because it's not actually going to be a happy ending yeah. sort of thing well one uh, of the best romance films not a rom-com but it's a romance is The Notebook it's really good mm. really well made like the acting is incredible blah 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 but the truth is the two main characters in it are so fractious that they, they fight so much that the yeah the reality is 
they probably wouldn't go the mm. distance <laughs> because they like they keep breaking yeah. up anyway. So it's so, I do understand that is yeah. a, a trope of the genre. So here here we're gonna get into so oh, fuck it, let's rip the band aid off and make this real nasty then. Right. So we've talked about accomplices to cheating then. Um so you, in your opinion, are Jeremy Piven and Molly Shannon because they've been duped into well, Molly Shannon's definitely been duped She's into been it. Duped, yeah. Um and he is reluctantly going along with it, at least at first, until he actually becomes the driving force at one point. Yeah, that um, that make, puts a negative on his character. Do you think that they are held responsible then no. for that? No, no. I'm not saying that they are equally or in any way as responsible as the main cast. Yeah. Piven is a bit because he's driving it after a while. Yeah. But other than that, I really like not... that scene when he's like, How can the how can something not happening be a sign? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But the the when I say he makes them they've made them accomplices, what it is is say they didn't get those two together. Yeah. They get married. Those friends now know that they've been that they've cheated on their partners. And that, my friend. And they're gonna have to conceal it yeah. or they're gonna have to out their friend. Right, first of all, if you out them, you're an asshole. I'm not or they're the world. asshole for putting no, you in no, the no. position. If I had friends who did this, I would have to not be friends with them anymore. So if I had a girlfriend, which I don't at the minute, yeah. and I cheat on her with someone, you and me wouldn't be friends anymore. Well, if you stay with her, it would be a struggle. And right. you know, and let me tell you for why. It's not because I'm holier than thou, I'm better than you. Okay. Right? The reason is, I'm a fucking idiot. I'm going to let it slip. If I know, mm. at some point, I'll make a joke about it or I'll, you know, not thinking. So I'm going to out you anyway. Right. And I don't want to out my friends, but I can't respect you mm. as someone who's cheated openly. Right. Let me in on it. And then you've made me sit there going, oh, hello, Sandra, say, let's just pick a name. Yeah. Oh, Sandra, yeah, no, he really does love you unconditionally, yeah. wholly. You know, I'm bullshitting then. You've made yeah. me a liar. So you either true, make true. me a liar or then it's not fair on me. And just to be fair, I'm not, just to be clear, I'm not arguing in favour of cheating. Oh, I'm I know. just playing just devil's saying, advocate. Yeah, no, no, I understand. Uh, <laughs> but no, it's it's people don't like it when people like myself have hard lines on stuff mm. because there are grey areas to things and people don't like it when you draw a strong like dark line in the sand mm. and go, fuck you, this is where my t But for me I have to mm. because I know I'm an idiot. So I have to draw a big fuck off line and go, mm. you cannot cross this path. Yeah without me having to do something about it. Yeah. Because otherwise I'm going to screw you. You're going to make me the asshole and it's not actually my fault you cheated. Yeah. So I, I, I make distances like that. Yeah. Because I have to. It's a, it's a mechanism to stop myself being the villain in someone else's story. Okay. And realistically, I think most people should do that. Because most oh, they of the won't, time, though. they won't. Because they go, oh no, I've got to treasure this. I love being the villain in other people's stories. I mean, I'm happy to be the it's villain the in being the most annoying play. man in the universe. But that's that's a choice. <laughs> so let's try and talk about Sandipity as a film. Let's try, sure, sure. Let's try and put the unless you've got you've got any more to say no, about no, the morality. No, 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 no. Let's let's move on about so the morality play. <laughs> let's try and put that to the side. <laughs> Is there any point asking if anything in this film worked for you? <laughs> um. Except Eugene Levy, maybe? Eugene Levy was brilliant. He, Eugene Levy is one of them weird actors. I've only ever seen him be, other than Shit's Creek, mm. he's only ever been in utter garbage. But he's the but best he's thing in it. But he's always the best thing in it. And I'm like, why is this guy not in good stuff? Because yeah. like, he could be the best thing in a great film, but he's always the best thing in a shite film. I think that's probably to do with the fact that he's not Hollywood attractive. But Why? I don't understand why he's not bad looking. Hollywood's he's weird. Not... Hollywood's weird. Yeah. Um, I love the bit when he, after after John Cusack finds out he's wasted all that money on a purple suit. Yeah. And he still tries to get the crocodile shoes. He's like, crocodile. Yeah. And he just slaps them out of his and hand. And I reckon that was an ad lib. Because of yeah. the way that he is, Eugene Levy. Also, uh, a big disappointment, that purple suit was fucking fantastic yeah. and it pisses me off he didn't wear it the rest of the film or at least for some of the rest well, of the film. Well, he's not the joke. <laughs> I don't care. I, I it liked was it. better than the rest of the... He was I wearing liked a fucking the grey t-shirt and a the brown suit. jacket. I liked the suit too but you have to remember me and you have a very weird fashion taste compared to most people. I don't. I have blue hair. Um, I'm normal. <laughs> <laughs> 
I'm perfectly normal. I'm perfectly sane. Um, I and I've got a matching fucking leather jacket, haven't I? Yeah. I just forgot about a turquoise I, leather jacket. I really like the soundtrack to this film. Mm. It's like a very folksy soundtrack. It's not Lots my t- of flutes. And yeah, it's not guitars. for me, but it's perfect for the genre, and it's yeah. actually a good soundtrack. Yeah. Um, I love the song Moonlight Kiss that plays at one point. Okay. Um, that's a really good song. Very slow, very um, chilled, which is not usually what I like to listen to. I usually like something with a bit of energy yeah. to it. Um, Nothing f- jumped out for me, I'm going to be honest, on the soundtrack. Yeah. But then my tastes are like something... like It's something usually it will stand out for me if it's super emotional. And obviously, watching this, I was not in an emotional place. Mm. Um <laughs> <laughs> not well, a positive argue, emotion. Argue, anyway, say, arguably, you were in an emotional Not a positive place. emotional not, place. not the emotion that the film wants you to be in. No. Um, or I prefer something that's like mega stylized in a sort of brash in your face way. So when we watched uh, Nowhere to Hide, for yeah. example, the guitaring and that was amazing for me. Yeah. But obviously, I know you said, you know, nothing jumped out for you. Mm. So that, I think that's a, a difference in... Um, a difference in tastes. It's weird, isn't it? Because this this film does get me emotionally. So I don't think the film is super funny. No, it's not the funniest film I've ever seen. It's for me. This is that sort of light comedy where I'm always I'm amused. Yeah, but I'm not laughing as such. Yeah, it's not a belly um, laugh no, comedy. It's not dodgeball. No. Um, but the emotions for me do work mm. in a lot of the places. It is weird because I've never really thought about the fact that they're cheating on their partners. <laughs> Most I've people always, don't. I, I mean, I've always just been a bit like, uh, to be honest, so now I'm going to sound like a real bad person, I've always thought that one of the strengths of this film that sets it apart, it's, it's so funny, the thing you hate about the film is the thing I've always touted as a strength of it. Right. I've always said to people, oh, but it's not like other rom-coms. Because yeah. in other rom-coms, like Three to Tango, which we'll get to, Dylan McDermott, he's clearly a bad person. I watched, um, we watched <laughs> one called The Accidental Husband years ago that's got Jeffrey Dean Morgan and Colin Firth in it. Yeah. And Colin Firth is clearly a dickhead. Yeah. Like, it clearly makes you hate him. Yeah. So To, to make it right, oh, well, they, you, but they're it's okay. Yeah, Which it technically off. isn't. Arguably, no. it's not. Unless they're literally abusive. It's st- Yeah. If they're, if they're not abusive, if they're just dickheaded, dickhead. just whatever, then leave. Yeah. Exactly. Um, I remember watching the special features for this years ago, and the director said, uh, Peter Chelsom, saying that he deliberately didn't want their partners to be like that. He wa- I almost feel like he thought he was directing a drama, and I wonder if there was maybe some conflict where he thought he was dr- directing a drama and the studio maybe crowbarred it. Yeah, because I, I, it's definitely one of those stories where if it had ended without the Hollywood romance mm. ending... It would have been a better movie. Yeah. But it, the, the studio would have seen that that would not have sold as well. Yeah. So they would have gone with the glamorous ending because yeah. they know that will bring people to the cinema. Or they would have assumed it would bring people to the cinema. Yeah. It actually makes it a forgettable film. Yeah. Um, I've always thought the thing that makes it stand out is the partners are not bad people. Yeah. They're not perfect people either. There is no um, perfect people. For example, so yeah, but that's the problem. A lot of rom-coms do present people as perfect. That's true. Um, you know, we talked, didn't we, about how Lars is being a little bit selfish oh, uh, yeah, in a way. So. because Well, they're... he's also he's, he's negatively affecting her career. So yeah. that is something that pissed me off. was like, it, he's... He is being selfish in that he wants to get married to her. Uh, no, that's not the selfish bit, but the bit selfish bit that... He thinks he wants his to... career comes before hers. Yeah, and when it's like... When he extends their holiday in Europe to fit around his band, she goes, "Well, I've only I've only taken this much time off because I, she's a psychiatrist, uh, so I can get back to my patients." He should be like, "Well, either you can extend your holiday," and she's like, "Oh no, I can't do that." It's like, "Well, in which case, maybe you don't have to be with me the whole time." Yeah, and he's just like, "Your patients can go without you for a couple of weeks, yeah, right?" Yeah, and it's like maybe they could, but that's her choice to make, not his. And also, why does she need to be there for his work? And not her own, yeah. you know. You're the whole point of a relationship. You're meant to be like supporting each other well, it's and each other's a, wants and careers. It's a bit of a chain reaction, isn't it? Because mm. it's because he's increasing the dates at Stockholm. Yeah, is why they've got to delay the holiday. Yeah, and that's when they're meant to get married. Yep. So they're having to push the wedding back, which she does need to be there for. Yeah, yeah, of course, obviously. And he's then basically not understanding that that has an impact on her patience. Yeah. And again, I, I do like the fact that it's not 
but it, he's not a villain. He's not a villain. No. He's not cheating on her. He's not beating her. No. Um, he and in means fact, he goes well. out of his way to find her. When she yeah. goes to New York, he misses her. Yeah. And I've always interpreted it as it's a nice commentary on how sometimes no one actually does something wrong, per se, in a relationship. Yeah. They just don't work. That, I like that story, though. Mm. That part's fine. Yeah. The issue is that these Th- people... They are doing something wrong. They are doing something wrong. The partners yeah. end up... It ends up in this position where the partners are actually the villains. And we're following the villains and going, go on, villains, rooting mm. for you. But we're meant to take that as the positive impact. The one thing I forgot to mention before we move on from serendipity is when we noticed that um, whenever anyone mentions something that's more artistic towards their careers, it's poo-pooed. So, uh, for example, it's mentioned that John Cusack's character... Wanted to be a documentary filmmaker. Yeah. And when they're at a dinner early on, uh, his... Friend. His dad. Yeah, he's well. His friend says he when he wanted to be a documentary filmmaker, which he's not doing anymore. He and his dad, go, yeah, and his dad goes, "Thank God, you know, oh my God, thank God for that sort of thing." Which I could relate to that because that's a parent thing. Like my, my, if I went, if I went home and went, Dad, I've given up the filmmaking thing. I'm just going to focus on my real job. Quote unquote. Yeah. My dad would be like, "Thank fuck for that." Sure, but it's fine to do it once. It's weird that they do it the other way. Yeah, and then Lars, who's making a success of his yeah. music career, as bullshit as his music is, mm. as he's still making a yeah. success of it. Yeah, I think the... It pr- then, even though he's successful, her best friend mm. then goes, that car- that music career, which hopefully is just a phase. The weird thing like, with what that... What the fuck? The weird thing is that is that's a bit of music pretension. That they've deliberately made him because there's no reason he has to play that type of music. No, the reason they've made it that type of music is as a joke, which is insulting to the area that music comes from, which yep. I think is East Asia. Yeah, yeah. Um, insulting to the character, and then it's insulting because it's like, well, we hope it's just because it's, it's not insult- real music. But it's selling if, out. If he was playing to get more gigs in yeah, Stockholm, if he was in like a traditional rock band, like a Metallica type thing, yeah. they'd probably be like, yeah, it's so fucking cool that he's a rock star. But because he's doing this weird music, where he's got like Viking. That's the that's a funny scene when they're watching the yeah. Viking music, and he's like, you don't think this guy looks like he hates the he's music, the- and the guy's like clearly in pain. Yeah, and his producer goes, no, no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See, the producer's the idiot in that scene, not the boyfriend. Yeah. Which is interesting. Sure. But so anyway. Let's talk about a second film then. Well, no, 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 I want to finish up oh, this no, one. Oh, no, go on. Um, so for me, yeah, for me, the film works. I don't, I'm, I'm curious now to watch it again and see if it's <laughs> ruined for me. Don't sit there sobbing if I've ruined um, it. Because <laughs> for me. I would oh. hate to have ruined it for you. I know I'm really angry about it, but I would have hated to have ruined a film that you love. It really hits me when she gives him the book. That really hits me. Yeah. But because that's, that's, what... tra- that's tragedy. That, that is, is tragedy, yeah. Uh, tragedy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it is, isn't it? Like, this woman is broken by the fact that he's... And to be fair, and I, you but it feel also, free it, to disagree. It, but also it shows that she's been, she loves him enough to have paid attention. Yes. Whereas, fuck all of that's been coming from... What's her face? Kate Beckinsale. Kate Beckinsale. Yeah. She's done fuck all. And to be fair, feel free to disagree with this. I think Cusack plays that bit perfectly. Oh, because his like, acting is perfect. I, like all of them are really good in their parts. Because I think in I just, that bit, it's the writing that I struggle with. In, in that bit, I think you can see that Cusack's wrestling with it in his head. Yeah. Because at that point, he's decided that it's not worth it, hasn't he? He's done the whole bit where yeah, yeah. maybe the absence of signs is a sign. Yeah. Um, she gives him a book, and he doesn't. A lesser film, I think, would have had him proper just be like, yes, yes, blah, 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 I've got it, whatever. Um, he almost looks like he's about to burst into tears. Because he knows he's ending his prospective marriage. Is And he literally just flops into the back of the cab with Jeremy Piven and just passes him the book. And he can't speak, like he can't even say anything for ages. Um yeah, it will the be perform- interesting to see it again. The per- yeah, the performance is great. I don't have, like you get all of the emotions you should out of John Cusack, and then some. The problem is is the writing and what it means. Mm. And that's not Cusack's fault. Yeah, I'm gonna make a film called Cheating Is Great one day, <laughs> and it's just gonna be all cheaters and the people who don't cheat die. So you're gonna make a film about big cats? Big cats? Yeah. What like lions and shit? No cheaters. Oh, <laughs> fuck you. It's witty. 
So on to our second film, which hopefully will be a little less divisive, um, but probably you pro- no, I'm joking, no. probably more <laughs> divisive with the audience, which is interesting. Okay, um, this is 2019. Correction, we were wrong on the year earlier. This is 2019's last Christmas. I gave him, sorry, last Christmas. Um, <laughs> <laughs> directed by Paul Feig or Paul Feig. I actually don't know how that's Paul pronounced. Paul Feig, I think they. No, it's definitely not Feig because that's yeah. an E at the end. Because Kevin Feig. Oh yeah, that's why yeah. I'm getting confused. Uh, Paul yeah. Feig, I'm going to say. Written by Bryony Kimmings and Emma Thompson. This is a movie based on the song Last Christmas by Wham, um, which is weird. It stars Amelia. It wears that very much on its sleeve. Yeah. It stars Amelia Clark, Henry Golding, Michelle Yeoh, Oscar winner Michelle Yeoh. Yep. Pre Oscar win. And Emma Thompson. Cinematography by John Schwartzman. I thought you were going to say Schwarzenegger. <laughs> Music by Theodore Shapiro. Its budget was $30 million and it made $123. million. Right. So more successful than I thought it was. Way more successful. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, You're like, this little film that no one's ever seen. <laughs> Um, so on Rotten Tomatoes, this film holds an approval rating of 46%. Ooh. Website's critics' consensus reads, likeable leads, terrific behind-the-scenes talent, and an intriguing musical hook aren't enough to save Last Christmas from its poorly conceived story. Audiences polled on CinemaScore gave the film an average grade of B-. Owen Gleiberman of Variety gave the film a negative review and wrote, It's twee, it's precious, it's forced, and it's light on true romance, maybe because the movie itself is a little too in love with itself. Ooh, ouch. (laughs) Um, Alonzo Duralde of The Rap compared the film to a Christmas album and said it was not as good as Paul Feig's best work, though it fulfills a craving for sticky Christmas pudding. Um, Head into a Christmas album, what, like last Christmas? <laughs> <laughs> the Guardian contrasted Emma Thompson's 1995 high quality adaptation of Sense and Sensibility to Last Christmas. Why would you compare those two things? Uh, I compared it to The Terminator, and The Terminator was a way yeah. better sci fi. What the fuck it, are you doing? Describing it as second rate, absurd, and inexplicable. Charles Bromesco of the it's AV... not that fucking inexplicable. Oh, no. The only inexplicable bit is why Emma Thompson's playing a former Yugoslavian. Yeah, that is the stupidest bit of yeah. the film. Um, Charles Bromesco of the AV Club called the film a guilty pleasure, but criticised the plot twist for predictable. It was, to be fair. Oh, Dave, yeah. Dave Gardner called it from the, uh, from the trailer. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> he was like, I've noticed in the trailer that character never interacts with any other character except Amelia Clark. Yeah, so yeah. I think he's a ghost. I, I, I like, clocked it. it about halfway through, didn't I? And it's funny that no one ever so, seems to know him, so I'm guessing... Yeah. He praised Clark for her performance, saying she succeeds in the only real meaningful test of rom-com skill in that she makes us want her to be happy. David Fear, great name. Oh, of what ro- a name. I know. David Fear of Rolling Stone described the film as incredibly, shockingly, monumentally bad. The kind of bad that falls somewhere between finding a lump of coal in your stocking and discovering one painfully lodged in your rectum. What? Jesus Christ. Okay, clearly, clearly we need to rename this film back to this this show back to Jamie your film taste sucks because clearly I'm all over the place with this I love this film it's not a good film I like this like I like this it's, film it's got lots of problems but it's enjoyable yeah. trash yeah you know what this is one where we agree like serendipity I was very much fuck this noise but this one no I liked this one it's a it's not a great film it's not one for the ages that will change your view on you know it's it's Obvious. My entire life was changed by last Christmas. <laughs> but you know what I mean? It's it's obvious. You know where it's going to go, at least by the halfway point. Their chemistry works, though, which is good. That's all you need in a rom-com. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and no one's cheating. That's, that's a big thing. You know, no one's cheating on anyone. It's a nice romantic story well i mean technically the guy right at the beginning's cheating on his girlfriend because she catches amelia clark in a shower don't she yeah but he's not our lead but you could tell he's a cheat you can look at him and go like that's a cheating douche you can oh, tell yeah. yeah yeah you can tell you can, well, yeah poor the actor neck. uh but anyway <laughs> <laughs> poor actor i don't even know he's but no the he's not a main character we you know douchebags be douchebags but here's a bit of dating advice for all the women out there Dating advice for the women out there. Yeah. If you fuck a dude, and the next morning he wakes you up and says he's going to the shop to buy whatever route it was and such and such a plant to make an energizing juice drink for you. Get out. He's a prick. Yeah. 
probably a serial killer too. If his ex had, if his girlfriend hadn't come back at that time, he probably would have killed Amelia Clark. Yeah. You'd also wonder why you're leaving a random person in your home, even if the random person is me. I mean, to be fair, <laughs> I probably should admit to this. <laughs> <laughs> Have you done that, Jamie? I um I hooked up with a girl from Tinder. Yep. Who lived uh, a little far away. So it wasn't worth meeting up for like two hours and then having to go back. So she came to stay with me for a week. Okay. I didn't know her. But that's and different. I had that's and I had to go to work during that week. Yeah. So f- during the daytime hours, but that's she had to a free reign. Well, no, it basically, I mean, no, I no, but you knew she was staying. Yeah. This is, he picks her up at a bar. He wakes her up the next morning, goes, I'm going out to buy some shit. And then fucks off. And leaves her in his house. Like someone who well, no, doesn't he do, know he there's does, no pre arrangement. He, he does tell her to use the shower though. Anywho, so, um so in this film, basically, Amelia Clark plays Kate, aka Katarina, who is the child of a refugee family who came from former Yugoslavia to Britain. Um, and she is, let's say, in a bad place at the start of this film. Yeah. Uh, she's basically homeless, move uh, couch surfing, basically, yeah, yeah. staying with friends or whatever one night stand she can pick up in a bar. Yep. She works in a. This is this is the bit that I know everyone hates, but you know what? It's goofy it's enough sweet. that it's charming. Yeah. She works in a year-round Christmas store you with know, a Chinese lady named Santa. But that is that is. A kitschy style Britishy thing. I People like, don't like that. kitsch though anymore, do they? That's true. People want everything to be gritty reality, son. Yeah, no, she should be in an Apple store, bruv. That's why people like films like Kiddlehood and Adulthood yeah. and The Gentleman. Ugh. I like The Gentleman. I know you do, son. But the best bits of The Gentleman. When we do The Gentleman, can we talk like this, son? Yeah. yeah. Are we watching The Gentleman, son? We're we watching The Gentleman, you motherfucker. It's better than Guy Ritchie's other films, I'll give you that. <laughs> Boy, what know. were you doing? Lockstock is pretty good. I don't seen that one to be fair, son. You don't want to, yeah. Well, well, sunshine, you want to be watching Snatch? It's, no, I've seen Snatch. I hate Snatch. It's garbage. It's one Brad of the worst. Pitt's mo- amazing. No, it actually sounds Irish. Snatch is one of the worst movies I've ever seen in my life. I hate oh. Snatch. I saw it on the show. Do you want to put it on the list and do it again? It. No, let's do let's do Lockstock. We're gonna do one. Lockstock. Lockstock. You toilet. <laughs> it's. <laughs> You twat. You fucking twat. <laughs> I did not expect this to turn into this. <laughs> no, not for a rom-com. Because no one has this voice Clearly this we've been recording too long and we've gone crazy. <laughs> there is not a single character in this thing that's like, hello, Amelia, how's it going, Dad? Well, th- there is that female cop who sounds like Jason Statham, isn't they? <laughs> not quite like Jason Statham. No, that's the joke. Did you not hear that joke? When You have to go to the break-in. She doesn't actually sound that. No, it's the way she like. says it, though. It's because because I thought that joke was quite funny because the ginger cop is going, Merry Christmas. And, she's, just, and she goes, have a Merry oh, Christmas, yeah? Like that. Yeah. And it's that way of phrasing where you put yeah on the end of something that it, it makes it, it sound threatening, doesn't it? It's like, I'll be honest, though. Have a Merry Christmas, yeah? That would have sounded... Uh, honestly, that, that character being a man with a deeper voice would have sounded better. Mm. Only because men den- generally have a deeper register. They generally have a deeper register. And adding that... You have a Merry Christmas, yeah. Sounds yeah. worse than you know a higher pitched. But I think I think, the, I think the, I think it's funnier a female sounding like Statham than just getting an but East she didn't London. Sound like Statham. They needed to pitch shifter then because there's Maybe. no that didn't sound that Maybe. didn't sound anywhere near but deep any, enough. Anyway, she works in this kitschy shop. Yes, um, and she's she's kind of shit at her job. And what we what we know and find out slowly as the film goes on is we we understand she's been ill for a period of time, yeah. but we don't really know with what. If you know the song "Last Christmas," you can guess where this is going. Yeah, yeah. Basically, long story short, I'm going to cut to the twist anyway. Let's do it. She had a heart condition, and the guy she keeps seeing, uh, Henry Golding's Golding. character, Tom, he's very good in this. He's very like good in this Golding. film. He uh, is a ghost, and he died a year ago. And no it was an organ. Scene in this one, though. No. No. <laughs> uh, oh, my love. My darling. <laughs> yeah, but you should do it in the Ray Winston voice. Oh, oh my, my love. love. My darling. <laughs> <It's>... <laughs> See what I mean? You can't do romance in that voice. It doesn't work. Well, baby, I just want to tell you, son, <laughs> that, um... <laughs> That I really love you, and um, I want you to marry me, son. <laughs> Last Christmas, I gave you my heart. Yeah. And it's it's the lyrics to the song. Last Christmas, yeah. I gave you my heart. Yeah. I mean, oh, Christ, and the it's... very next day. What did you do, Rory? 
I gave it away. Gave it away. She's ruining, you know, he's given her this second chance at life yep. and she's wasting it. Um, so he's appearing in front of her to guide her. Guide her a bit. But and it's, ends it's, up falling in love with yeah, her. Yeah, it's obvious, it's schmaltzy, it's overly sweet and also, sentimental. Also, he's a little bit of a, he's a little bit of a prick. If you want to be that, if you want to be that, because because he knows he's a ghost. Yeah, this yeah. isn't a situation where he doesn't realise he's dead. Yeah, he knows he's a ghost. Did his bicycle die as well? Because it must. Well, the bicycle did get hit. So clearly, the moral of this film is bicycles have souls. Yeah, he's got, he, um, he carries his bicycle soul with him. Let's be clear: this film is cheesy. It's incredibly yeah. cheesy. If you're someone who can't hack cheesy in a Christmas movie, yep. first of all, why are you watching Christmas movies? Yeah, I know because they're it's, all cheesy. If there was ever a time for cheese, Christmas. Is the fucking yeah. one, but something about and this Valentine's film, Day, yeah, something about this film just works. Yep, everyone's to be honest. You know the worst actor is in it, and it's a real shame. Emma Thompson. It's Emma Thompson. She's awful. It's it, it's She's just awful. Her, the, it's the accent. The accent is so. It, honestly, it's this bad. She's literally talking like this, like I am in Yugoslavian. Uh, it's like no fuck off, love. You're not. And they even do a joke, don't they? Where the the because she won't answer the door. Yeah. Amelia Clark bangs on the door. She's going KGB, KGB, and she answers. Don't joke about that. KGB, yeah, terrifying. And, but she's got such an awful accent. And certainly at that point as well. It's the first time you hear her voice. And did as you well. say the? Like, you, oh. Did you say the guy playing the dad is actually Yugoslavian? Yeah. So, so why would you put them together? Also, because it just makes the fake accent stand out more yeah so here's the the big issue with this because it makes like, there's no reason narratively that she's yugoslavian no like you've got it's a, just for this shoehorned in racism scene that they've got the thing with the yugoslavian accents is that you've got one yugoslavian in your film which is the da- or main yugoslavian there may be two on the bus but you've, what about the sister which is the dad the is sister, sister is, Yugoslavian uh, or no, not? No, I think she's English. Okay. Um, like, as far as the actresses are concerned, you have three actresses... Who are all English. Who are all British as fuck. Yeah. And, and then Amelia you've got one Clark Yugoslavian and... dad, and you're all sitting there doing some Yugoslavian, but at least Amelia Clark and the sister Just aren't are... doing the accent. For the most part. And to be fair, I want to be very clear here. With nothing against Emma Thompson. Emma Thompson's a great actress. Oh, she's done some amazing Th- this work. This is a rare swing and a miss for her. Oh, massive miss. Um, and it's because it's it's so out of place with some of the other things it's trying to do. Because, yeah, it's out of place with the message of the film. Yeah, because a lot of this film is... that uh, No doubt there's probably been people out there that have had a go because it's got some woke ideals running through yeah. it. Yeah, you got to remember that this film was made like... In the wake of the Brexit vote, yeah, and, and that I know comes em, up. Strongly. I know a, there are a lot of British people. Emma Thompson was one of them who were very, very strongly against Brexit. Yeah, which is um, understandable as a, as a mindset. Yeah, the thing it's is, a it, weird film to put that message in. Yeah, and it also is the only thing that really dates the movie. Yeah, because like even by 2019, Brexit was a, was done and dusted, and we've moved like you know we'd moved on, quote unquote, to a worse future. But you know what? It was done. Yeah, whereas. With like so, so it seemed weird to then carry it over. It's like she couldn't get past it. And I'm not saying necessarily that we should just accept whatever. But you're in a movie that is like has the has the magic of being able to see a dead person because you have their heart transplanted mm. into you. So we're in a if, if there's a fiction to it. You're then bringing in Brexit, which dates it solidly in a. It's a very specific period of time. Yeah. And your narrative is, oh, you know, that's how bad Britain, British people are. They obviously mm. hate us, blah, blah, blah. But you've got a British accent, a British woman doing it in a really terrible Yugoslavian yeah. accent. They and hate then, us, look how they hate us. And You're they, like, do, oh, they do this off. joke. They do this joke that I'm not saying whether I found it funny or not. All I'm saying <laughs> that is... That you did. All I'm saying... <laughs> no, no. All I'm saying is I, confession time... I saw this film four times in the cinemas. Wow. It was a dark time in my life, okay? Fair enough. I had an Odeon Limitless card. There's I was drinking with very heavily. Enjo- well, maybe don't drink too heavily. <laughs> and I literally went to... I was going to see this film as a weird sort of both pick-me-up slash punishing myself. Because I think this was the second Christmas I spent alone. Right. And 
I would leave this film, and it was funny, of the four times I watched it, sometimes I left the film with a really positive feeling. Yep. And sometimes I left being like, I'm never going to find anyone. Oh. Uh, very sad. Anyway, there's a joke in it where it's clearly meant to be one of those things where, oh, everyone's a little bit racist type thing. Yeah. Where she comes in and she's like, oh, mum, you know, they're not going to deport you. This is your home, blah, blah, blah. Um, et cetera, et cetera. It, seems, it feels really off base to tell that to an English white yeah. woman. And she goes, <laughs> even though I she's playing you, but we know who and, she, and she, is. she goes, I've seen this before. I'm not going to, you know, I'm not even do the accent. Don't, don't. She, she just does, goes, she, she goes, I've seen this before. First, they pick on a group, they spread rumors about them, and then people point and go, it's their fault that the country's bad. It's their fault. And people believe them. Mm. And Amelia Cox like, oh, no, no, no. And then Emma Thompson goes, you know, I blame the Poles. Yeah, which is obviously meant to be a joke. And, well, the joke is everyone's a little bit racist. Now, let, I'm not saying whether this was racist or not, but what I will tell you, I saw this film four times in cinema, and all four times, the nearly exclusively white audience that I saw this with <laughs> laughed their asses off at that line. Fair enough. An Amelia, successful joke. An Amelia Clark. I'm not saying it should be. I'm not I'm, saying it should I'm be either, but we, on, it was successful. I'm saying we live in South End, which is a Tory stronghold. Yeah. And um, Amelia Clark literally breaks the fourth wall. Yeah, and the only time she does as well. Proper, like, haughty derision look at the camera, just yeah. like... <sighs> like that. But the thing is, these Brexit scenes that they put in, they just don't belong in this film. They don't belong in this film, but also they're not within other scenes. Like when we say they're shoehorned in. They feel like, they it's... feel like reshoots, don't they? It yeah. feels like the film was shot, then those Brexit protests happened where you were like, Bre get Brexit done, get Brexit yeah. done. And they went back and filmed additional footage. Because these aren't, these, There's no they build up to them. No, and they don't connect to the main narrative at all. No, they. Re, I, do you know what? Yeah, I'm calling it reshoots. Yeah, re, at last minute reshoots yeah. or last minute in. additions, so that they were just shoehorned in without any consideration yeah. for the rest to try of and make the, the film topical. Yeah, one thing. Christmas did... films shouldn't be topical. All the best Christmas films. How could they be? They're about a fucking ancient tradition that has been butchered a million ways to flipping hell. Saturnalia. Well, it's not even a Christian thing. I it know, was co-opted. It's pagan. And even then, the like the Christian version of it has been co-opted by Coca-Cola. Santa Claus is green, but he's always depicted as red only because of Coca-Cola. Yeah, you're looking a little bit green there, son. A bit of green. How about a bit of red in your life? You're feeling a little bit sick, are you, Get son? yourself a bit of fucking cocaine you, in your blood. You need some fisherman's friends. Because when Coca-Cola took him over as red, it still would have had cocaine in it. Oh, yeah. So it would have been proper cocaine, Mate, son. mate, I'm telling you now, this is my conspiracy theory that I believe in. <laughs> There's still cocaine in Coke, they just don't admit it. It's co coming off Coca-Cola was oh, the hardest yeah. thing. I, I, Bim and I had an alcohol problem, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was easier to give up alcohol than it was Coca-Cola. Yeah, no, I'm still trying to pull myself off of Coca-Cola. There's still Coca-Cola in... There's still cocaine in Coca-Cola. There's still Coca-Cola oh. in Coca-Cola. What's Coca this red dot on my chest? <laughs> <laughs> Mission done. <laughs> and that, all these, Target assassinated. All Santa. the snipers are dressed as Santa. <laughs> Red Santa. Do, 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 do. Yeah. Um, I really love the way Michelle Yeoh and the German guy interact. Uh, I really like the bit when she's like, um, oh, he's an expert in sauerkraut, which will be difficult because I'm not a sour person. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah. I'm like, I don't know. Is sauerkraut actually sour? It is, yeah. Oh, is it? Sour I mean, I would, I've never eaten it because I don't eat meat, but... Honestly, can I get vegetarian sauerkraut? Yeah, um, I think I think all the performances in this are actually pretty good. Yeah. Not, in, I mean, no one's winning a fucking Oscar for uh, it. The only performance I really, really dislike, and we've already mentioned it many times, is Emma hers. Thompson. Yeah, yeah. Um, everyone else is suitably charming, and that's what you want in a Christmas rom com. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they're believable enough that you want them to be together. Um, I thought. I thought the film was pretty funny in places. Funny yeah. enough that I was never bored. Yeah, no, honestly, I enjoyed this film. This, like, which is ironic because you said that I would probably hate this film because it's overly sweet and I would... You know, I didn't think you would like this one. Yeah, but I do. I, th I thought you'd A, be bored, and B, I thought you'd... I, I thought when the twist happened, you'd literally just be like, what the shit? <laughs> no, because I saw it coming. <laughs> this is so stupid. No, it's fine. It's like it's it's obvious. It's predictable. It didn't get me. Mm. It was obvious. Did the emotion punch you though? Yeah. Did you, did you feel a little upset? I felt sorry for her that she couldn't be with him. Mm. 
but which is what you want. Yeah, it's nice to see um, their relationship, you know, sort of develop. Even yeah. this is the first thing I ever saw Henry Golding in, by the way. Oh, really? Because I saw this before The Gentleman. Okay. What I will say that to contrast this with, say, Serendipity a little bit, since we're watching them both yeah. for the same sort of review thing. It saddens me that they're nearly twenty years apart. Yeah. I feel so old. <laughs> but with this, the thing that makes this work other than the not cheating part yeah. is they have time together. So they are developing the relationship yeah. past the first oh, you seem hot. It gets past that to, you know, genuine feelings, her talking about what she's been through. All of you know, you are actually developing this relationship. Yeah. Serendipity doesn't develop any relationship between Cusack and Kate okay, Beckinsale. No, they they don't have a relationship. Yeah. What they have is a lust, realistically. Got a lust that, for life. Yeah. But this starts with that. She looks yeah. at him through the window and is like, mm, he's a bit of all well, right. No, no, she doesn't like him at first. Well, she this, goes outside for a reason. This, to see what he's looking at. Because right. he's just standing there staring up, isn't he? Which, you know, people in London don't do. Um, that is a bit of a cliche I think she goes up because but it she, works. I, for me, it felt like she went out because she actually thinks he's a bit tasty. Because she looks at his legs. Does she? Yes. She pulls the, she knocks the thing off so she sees him through the window. Mm. She then pulls another one out underneath and looks at his legs. Oh, okay. So I think she likes the look of him. She goes out to talk to him and finds him a bit weird, gets pooed in the eye. <laughs> yeah. And then just, shit in bird yeah. shit in my and eye. And weirdly enough that ruins the mood. Uh but <laughs> she, Not then, for me, son. <laughs> yeah. Uh, not for me, son. No, I don't like shit in the face. So I think she goes out with the initial intent that oh, he's a bit of a tasty dish. And then it develops. And it's a it's a shame that this is the one that they didn't end up being able to be together. Because of that. And I'll tell you what it did remind me a little bit of is a film that's not the same as this. It's a tragedy, not a, 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 like a Christmas comedy, but it was also kind of all through the cold the way this was. And it's called Seven Pounds. With, with Will Smith. Smith. Um, because there's similar storylines going on. Though that one's played as a, like a, a much drama. more dark tragedy. This one, obviously it's a bit tragic that they can't be together, but it's a positive outcome overall. Yeah, her life improves. Yeah, because he gives her a sense of self-worth. So she starts actually helping people, becoming more than she was before, which was just a selfish prick. You know, it's a positive end. Whereas there's not really a positive end to Seven Pounds. Oh, okay. Um, it's it, There's like a glimmer of positivity at the end, but it's mm. not a positive film overall. It's quite heartbreaking. Um, so for me, it kind of works on that level. The tragedy of it works for me. I like that. Um, but also the romance works. I get these two. I get them. Mm. These two work because we have time with them. I love the bit when they're in the ice rink. Yeah. Yeah. And it's weird as well that both have an ice rink scene. I know. I know. I, there must just be something inherently romantic about ice rinks. Can I just say something? I need oh, no. to learn oh. to skate, clearly. <laughs> That's well, how you pick up chicks. <laughs> this is a bit of a fourth wall break for this show, but we recorded uh, Nowhere to Hide and Jingle All the Way on the same day we've recorded these two. Yes. Right? Uh, or this one for the two dual films. And it's weird that there's been similarities for both. Like, we pre-watched Jingle All the Way and Nowhere to Hide. And they both had scenes where people get stomped on. Stomped in the face, and then, like, the boot prints are literally drawn on their head like a cartoon. Yeah, and these both have and ice And these rinks. both have ice rinks. And it's like, and we watched both of these together here today. And it's like, why are we getting this weird duology? Maybe it's a sign. Maybe it's fate that brought us together, Jamie. <laughs> Be honest, if you'd have watched, if we'd have watched these, set, if I'd have, like, sent you these two and we watched them separately... Would your anger at serendipity have been even greater because she didn't have to be on your best behaviour because you're in my flat? Would you have, like, punched your fist through no, a door or something? I'm not violent. There's Aren't a... you? It's, yeah, it's got that feel-good cheese to it, like, because yeah. she starts working at the homeless shelter, doesn't yeah. she, and puts the talent show on. It reminded me a little bit, I'm not saying it's as good as, I'm, <laughs> I can't remember this other film very well, but it reminds me of something like The Full Monty. Right, okay. Which I have not seen in a very, very long time. Yeah, I haven't seen that for about 20 years. Yeah, but from memory, it's this same cheesy feel-good nature to it. Yeah, but that one has one letdown. You don't even get to see their cocks at the end. <laughs> yeah, true, true. Um, <laughs> I'm joking. It's, it's funny, isn't it, that Britain is so well known for social realism films. Yes. 
But every now and again, we do just put out like a proper cheesy feel good movie. But it gets slammed. But Full Monty didn't. That's the so it's Full Monty. Just, I think because there's more drama to Full Monty. Yeah, I think that's why this about is, like coal mines being closed and things like that. Also, it's not a romance as such. There are romance stories in it. Yeah, but it's not overtly a romance story. Whereas this is all about a singular romance, though with other romances yeah. on the side. This is all over. You can't remove the romance from this film and still have it as a film. Yeah. Whereas you could remove the romances from Full Monty, you could still make the, it would be a lesser film, but you could still yeah. make the narrative work. What is hilarious is that bench they keep going and sitting on all day that turns out to be dedicated to him. Yep. Imagine if she just read that plaque. <laughs> the first yeah. day they went there, I was like, hang on a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Dude. Dude, are you fucking dead? <laughs> but... Why, yes. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't really have much more to say about this film that I haven't already said. I enjoyed this one. Uh, it's cheesy. It's a bit, you know, it, it's not going to win any awards, obviously. People yeah. seem to really... But I think this is one of those films that people will rip into because pretentiousness suggests that, oh, it's not actually... It doesn't say enough. It hasn't gone into depth about... Yeah. You, know, you don't like, have to all the it's, time. No, it's, sometimes you just want an enjoyable film. Yeah, I love a good film that's, like, deep and makes you think. Absolutely. Um, but sometimes I just want to watch something that's going to make me feel happy. God damn it. Not every film needs to be 12 Angry Men. Not every film needs to be The Sunset Limited. Why are you doing the politician thing because i must get this across to all of the nation strong and stable strong and stable get brexit get done bre- get brexit i am not a i am not a yeah sometimes you just want a really nice feel good film and sometimes it, it doesn't have to be just a romance like this uh, i like the street fighter movie for example which is garbage but it's good fun yeah i feel the same about drive angry yeah drive angry is trash it, but it's fun but it's trash fun. okay so i think there's probably not much more to say about last christmas beyond the fact that it's just a nice little film so yeah i not a bad christmas watch i much uh, yeah i would watch again if i you know when I get next a Christmas, <laughs> no, uh, I would watch with a partner, or I would just maybe watch on my own if I'm feeling a bit soppy. It's fine. I, it's a perfectly serviceable film. Serendipity, I will never watch again. <laughs> I am too never, angry. never, never, never. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad we watched it the way round we did because it took the edge off of it. Can you imagine how you can imagine how angry I was mm. if I was tamed down I'm by legit- the time we record it. I legitimately want <laughs> listeners to write in to us about these two films because I'm so interested to see what the public reaction is because I feel like Last Christmas is unfairly lambasted. Mm. Uh, those review comments that we read were Some awful. Were, it just seemed to be this is this is cute, sweet and charming. And that's a how, bad thing. Yeah, how fucking dare they? Yeah. But yeah, I'd love to know what you think about it and where you stand on the serendipity issue. Did it make anyone else angry? I'd love to know if it made anyone else angry. And now I've just been a complete tool this entire time. I think what's probably... what's probably... I reckon most people will be okay with it and just go, eh, it's just not that good a movie and I'm going to look like a bellend. (laughs) Wow. No, nothing new there, son. Yeah, yeah. Well, normally I'm just annoying, though, not just a complete tool. (laughs) If you do want to write to us, please write to us at info.impalafilms at gmail.com with the subject heading STC. (laughs) Or the subject line, toilet. No, STC. (laughs) Uh, And let us know your opinions on the film. We'd absolutely love to hear that. So, without further ado, I think it's time that we were saying goodbye, son. And I think uh, think we'll say Merry Christmas and and a happy birthday to Jamie, son. Good Yule to you, son. Good Yule and a happy birthday. Thank you. Thank you. I don't know if this will come out near my actual birthday or not. It doesn't matter. Happy birthday, you twat. Goodbye, everyone. Goodbye.